But this was the first of many, many <laughs> Stephanie McMahon acting segments in the show. And this is one of those things, I didn't remember that it happened until she said it, but as soon as she said it, I realized I remember this from 19 years ago very clearly. Because Kane's arm's all taped up, and they've got an arm bar on him in the ring, or a hammer lock Christian had at one point, whatever. And they cut backstage. And Stephanie, she has one gesture, which is she holds her arm out like this. And that is her gesture for confusion. It's her gesture for curiosity. It's her gesture for pride. That's all she ever does. So she holds her arm out like that and says, how long does it take to break the arm? How long does it take yeah. to break the arm? And Austin and Hunter are completely befuddled. <laughs> they have no idea what to say, and we just go back to the match. <laughs> How long does it take to break the arm? 32 seconds, Stephanie. Fuck. It takes 32 seconds for an arm bar to kick in I, and break the arm. I guess it depends on what you're doing. Are you yes, falling? Craig, that's the point. There, there are many options. If Paisley is charged with breaking my arm, the answer is never. Sure. If Vinny is charged with breaking my arm, I'm sure at some point he could do it. Does he have? Does he have an accoutrement? I yeah, mean, does I, he have I, a technique? If I'm attacking you with a crowbar, sure. it takes zero seconds. Does he know jujitsu or not? Yeah. Right. Does he have a weapon? I mean, how's his grip? I mean, what That's a fucking great. dumb question! I don't know how fucking long it takes to break an arm. It depends. So they do the bit with the chairs. It's a DQ, but Kane is down now. Apparently, a one-armed uh, 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 big red machine and. They go back to Austin and Hunter, and Austin and Hunter are just sitting on the couch smugly. Their mm -hmm. night has been great. This is what they mm -hmm. wanted to happen. It's been a perfect night. Right. And if they just sit there, it's fine. It's good. But no, Stephanie has to act. <laughs> His arm has got to be broken, she says. Thank you, Stephanie. <laughs> How long did it take? <laughs> so Deborah returns. She has botched Stephanie's coffee order. Too much milk or the wrong kind of milk or whatever. She gives the hunt coffee to Hunter. Hunter says, oh, it's perfect. Thank you. <laughs> and then she goes over to Steve Austin. This is important because pay attention. She picks up a cup of coffee in her hand and she pours it into his face. Yeah. You can imagine how it goes from there. He tells her to go sit in the truck. Don't leave. Don't just wait there until I get done. But just keep that in mind. It comes up later. It does? Yes. Yeah. Actually, it does. Fuck, I don't even remember. It was not an accident. Well, obviously. I mean, when you watch yeah, it, it was clearly that's the key. Accident. It's not an accident. Right. They they played it off like it was an accident. They, well, one the, one man played it off. The, uh, we'll the, commentators, it. the commentators kept asking, was that an accident? No, no. It's not even the commentators, because Taz knew yeah. it was legit. Right. It's Michael Cole, but we'll get to him. Right. The Lugs Boot of the Week is Shane hitting show with a chair on Raw, and then, yes, Test booting the big show out of the ring. Great. So Test and Rhino are having a hardcore match. The winner will be champion and defending us Raven on Sunday. Do we mention this is the go-home show? Yeah, this is the go-home show for There's the pay-per-view. So remember, remember, Brian, when we were watching Saturday night's main event, and how Vince McMahon was the most biased announcer of all time. Oh, yes. And that Babyface would cheat and he would deny it or say he didn't see it or say they're not doing it now. Well, Vince McMahon's here in 2001, screaming into Michael Cole's headset, telling him what to say. And so Michael Cole, the voice of Vince McMahon, tells us that Deborah accidentally spilled coffee on Steve Austin. And he snapped on her for no reason. Yeah, that's bullshit. Now, <laughs> listen... I'm not going to get into the character of Stone Cold Steve Austin or anything, but if you pour a cup of scalding hot coffee in my face, I will snap at you. And not for no reason. For a very good reason. I'm in pain. And then, yes, it's The Undertaker versus The Right to Censor. Lots more. Hunter, hey, listen, I'm Austin sick of these Steph. fucking guys. I'm absolutely <laughs> sick of them. But, I mean, at least there was a simple story to the match, which was they couldn't get along. Stevie had been yelling at them. He said he would be a leader. They got pissed at him. They walked out, and Undertaker hit him with a press power bomb so powerful that it knocked himself on his ass. Yes. And then he got the pin. And again, how can this last seven more weeks? How? We've done it all. They've broken up 85 times. They've deserted the guy. 
I mean, fuck. How? All I know is Hunter and Austin thought this was their grand plan to get Undertaker beat up. Instead, Taker overcame the odds, beat them up instead, and they go backstage, and they're like slamming their belts down, and they're angry, and Stephanie is doing her arm thing. <laughs> she has one motion. That's all she can do. Now, I will say this. There's a lot of these Stephanie shows and angles and promos and whatever that they're terrible and it makes me mad. This one, she was terrible, but I did laugh at it. It was funny bad. I guess that's good. Hunter and Austin are asking Regal who their opponents are tonight. He insists he can't tell them. Finally agrees to whisper in their ears. And they're taken aback. You're ribbing me, Hunter says. He turns to Stefan and says, You better stay back, me, back here. This will be dangerous. And they walk out. And Stephanie has to assure them, Be careful! <laughs> She went to the Brian Alvarez School of Enunciation. Yes. It's, but you it, see, it, I do it for comedy. Yeah. Right. She, th she, yeah, she's not doing it for comedy. It, it, it's like the mo it's like a terrible William Shatner impression, but that's what she's doing. Communications, like. Vinny. A degree in communications. So I've been thinking about this since the last time we talked, last week on the show. And the, the more I think about it, the, the, the more it makes sense. Because it's not a degree in drama or literature. She's not there to entertain you or right. to, to convince you. She's there to communicate. She's there to communicate. And I understand every word she's saying, and, and the, the points she's making are hammered home in my head. I just feel dumber for having seen it. So it's... Oh, we're up to the main event already. Mm -hmm. It's Steve Austin and Triple H versus Kai and Ty. Well, pardon me, versus mystery opponents, excuse me. So as Austin and Hunter are doing their entrances, they're still talking about this coffee angle, and Michael Cole is squealing at me. She spilled coffee. She didn't chuck it on him. And they show a video, <laughs> and I watch it with my own eyes, as she takes this coffee, and she chucks it on him. And they're gaslighting me. I can see what's happening, and they're just blatantly lying to me. So Kai and Ty come out and do their entrance, and Hunter and Austin, of course, they, they played it off as a big serious threat, but as soon as Kai and Ty come out, they start to smile and laugh. And Kai and Ty are doing their shtick, and Taka's mouth is moving, but we hear Shane's voice saying all kinds of wacky dialogue, and they're in Denver, so they're wearing the Colorado or the, the uh yeah, the Colorado Avalanche jerseys and all that stuff, and Taka says his piece and passes the mic to to Funaki, and we hear the other guy say, Indeed. And they go down the ramp, the music's playing, and everything's normal. Everything's, everything's every Kai and Tai segment ever. But then right before they get to the ring, they stop. And Taka starts to speak again. But we do not hear Shane McMahon's voice. We hear The Undertaker's voice. And he says, whatever. And Austin and Hunter are no dummies. They know something's up. And he passes the mic to Funaki, and we hear Kane's voice, I guess, saying, indeed. Kai and Tai hit the ring. Hunter and Austin kill them. Taker and Kane hit the ring. Kai and I disappear. Their, their part here is done. Taker and Kane beat Austin and Hunter up. Austin and Hunter flee. Taker and Kane pose with all the belts. And that is the main event on the Go Home Show for Backlash. <laughs> 